In this video we are going to talk about top 10 places in Cornwall. So before starting this video, please like this video and subscribe to our channel for future updates. Cornwall shares as much in common with places like Brittany as it does with the United Kingdom, thanks to its Celtic tradition and craggy granite coastline. Village ports, protected by deep inlets on the coast, harken back to a bygone era with their fishing boats and stone homes. Smugglers' tails, boat cruises, and delicious fish and seafood may all be found here. These smaller towns share Cornwall with a few of the country's most beloved seaside destinations, such as St. Ives, which boasts an almost unbelievable array of beaches, and Nuque, the UK's surfing capital. Let's have a look at the greatest locations to go in Cornwall. Number 10. Boscastle. Despite being a small seaside community, Boscastle is a delight to explore because it extends out for miles alongside its natural harbor. There's a mix of old fishing cottages and inns, as well as steep green hills that rise dramatically from the water's edge. The lookout, built as a vacation home by a local landowner and then used as an observation point to combat smugglers, stands above the entrance to the harbor on a magnificent promontory. A National Trust Café and the Museum of Witchcraft and Magic, with what may be the world's largest treasure of ritual magic relics, are located further back, where the port is merely a small channel. Number 9. Truro. Truro is a tiny city that is smaller than many market towns yet doesn't suffer because of it. The well-kept Georgian and Victorian architecture in the heart of the city dates back to the days when tin mining was a way of life, putting Truro on the map as a political power center. The cathedral was constructed at this time, in the Gothic Revival style, at the end of the 19th century, and has three spires, which is rare. Aside from strolling around charming commercial lanes like Cathedral Lane and St. Mary's Street, the Royal Cornwall Museum, housed in a splendid Palladian Hall, is worth a visit. Local activities, such as open farms, boat tours, country parks, cider presses, and breweries, are surprisingly rural for a metropolis. Number 8. Falmouth. Many factors contribute to Falmouth's popularity as a vacation destination. The first is the Fall River Estuary, which widens into the world's third deepest natural harbor. You can't beat this region for hiking, and you can jump from village to hamlet on boat rides that you'll remember for the rest of your life. Then there's the town's harbor, which has hosted daring round-the-world expeditions and served as a base for the American fleet during World War II. The National Maritime Museum has records of all of this, and that's only the beginning. There's Trebog Garden, family-friendly beaches, quirky boutiques, and Pendennis Castle, Henry VIII's coastal castle. Number 7. Mevagizzi. Mevagizzi, a charming village on the Roseland Heritage Coast, still has a small fleet of fishing boats departing and returning with sole, turbot, and lobster from its peculiar twin harbor. The inner quaysides date back to the Middle Ages, while the outside harbor walls date back to the 18th century. In Mevagizzi, fishing trips and boat rides to nearby communities are the norm. However, you should allow yourself enough time to explore this area, which features a maze of lanes that spiral up the verdant hillsides, fantastic seafood restaurants, and a plethora of tempting shops. Number 6. Bodmin. In the heart of Conwall's tin mining heartland, Bodmin's streets are lined with dramatic granite buildings financed by this historic industry. The neoclassical elegance of the county court communicates Bodmin's status in previous centuries. Bodmin Jail, which dates from the 1700s and was the first facility to place criminals in separate cells, is one spooky attraction you must see. Take the tour to learn about the alleged hauntings of these walls, as well as the First World War, when the Crown Treasures and Doomsday Book were housed for security. The Pencaro or Lanhydric House, two lovely country stacks, provide a more refined day out. Number 5. Penzance. Penzance has seen a lot of nautical visitors, some friendly, others not so friendly, such as Barbary Corsairs or foreign fleets like the Spanish Armada in 1595. It's a lovely port with a lot of Regency and Georgian buildings built out of granite. Look for the Egyptian house from the 1830s on Chapel Street, or the sleek Art Deco Jubilee Pool Lido from 1835. And, whether you want to see a show or just take a tour, the Minak Theatre, which was carved out of the granite cliffs in the 1930s, is a sight to behold. Cornish palms line the streets in Penzance's warmer climates, and there's an incredible selection of subtropical gardens to visit. Tanglewood, Trangwainton, and Morab are all must-sees, but don't forget about the National Dahlia Collection. Number 4. Lou. 
Lu is one of the most charming fishing ports in the county, and it still boasts a fleet of fishing boats. Get up early in the morning to catch the fish auction on the quayside, or go crabbing on the old harbor wall to capture your own seafood. The Monkey Sanctuary rescues woolly monkeys and finally returns them to the Amazon for the younger members of the family. In the town's guild hall, there's an interesting museum, and you can take a boat to St. George's Island, which was a center of smuggling in the 1600s and 1700s. Number 3. St. Austell. St. Austell, like the best towns in Cornwall, has hilly, scurrying roads that entice you to explore. China clay was a huge industry here in the 1800s, and the Eden Project, a mind-blowing botanical project that was launched for the new century, is housed in a disused clay pit. There are two amazing geodesic biomes, one with rainforest vegetation and the other with Mediterranean flora. If you prepare early, you might be able to attend the Eden Sessions, a series of summer concerts including Brian Wilson, The Flaming Lips, PJ Harvey, and Sigur Rose, among others. The Lost Gardens of Heligan, which surround the 17th-century Heligan House and are known for their massive rhododendron and camellia bushes, are much older. Number 2. Nuque. The word, Nuque, brings up memories of surfing for most people. This is the UK's surf capital, with six fantastic beaches for catching waves. The Fistral, though, is the reason for Nuque's popularity, with a beach break that produces tall, hollow waves that will test the talents of seasoned surfers while providing an ideal introduction to the sport for newbies. Nuque is known for its surfing, but the town has a lot more to offer with its seven miles of sandy beach. You may invite younger beachgoers to Nuque or Dairyland Farmworld to play in the calmer bays, take steam train rides, and befriend the animals. Meanwhile, couples can stay at charming bed and breakfasts, go for lovely walks, and visit the sublime Elizabethan Treris house. Number 1. St. Ives. St. Ives grew from a fishing port to probably England's most beautiful coastal resort in the 20th century. This is due in large part to the availability of beautiful beaches nearby. The choice is nearly incomprehensible, but Porthminster and Porthmuir, with their silky golden sands and pristine seascapes, are the cream of the crop. The resort's fishing background adds to its charm. Colorful fishing vessels can still be seen pulling into and out of the harbor, while quirky old stores and inns can be found along the town's twisting cobblestone streets. As if that weren't enough, the town was designated as an artist's colony in the 1930s. There's a magnificent Barbara Hepworth sculpture garden, as well as a Tate Museum branch and independent galleries to explore. What do you think about our list? Please let us know in the comment section. If you liked this video and want to hear from me again, please subscribe and turn on the notification before leaving. Thank you for watching us.